Hello everyone, my name is Quill, and today we're going to talk about the Perception Tree. This video is aimed towards newer players, or folks who maybe haven't played in a while. For any veteran players watching this, if you have some info that I didn't mention, please leave it in the comments below. Also, keep in mind that this was based off of Alpha 19 and can become outdated with the release of another Alpha. With that out of the way, let's get rolling. Perception is one of the five attributes you can level in 7 Days to Die, the other four being Strength, Fortitude, Agility, and Intellect but we'll get to those on another video. You start off with one rank in Perception, and to level it all the way to rank 10, you would need to invest 16 skill points. Every rank will increase the amount of headshot damage you deal, and also give you a higher chance of dismembering your target when using rifles, explosives, spears, and certain tools. Really, there's not much else to explain here, so let's dive into the perks. If the thought of picking off your enemies from far away with a single shot gets your motor running, the Deadeye perk may be for you. Deadeye will increase your damage by up to 50% when using hunting, marksman, or sniper rifles. It will also allow you to reload and aim down the sights faster while using less stamina. Starting at rank 3, Deadeye will provide a secondary perk called Killstreak. Taking out an enemy will cause your next shot to deal extra damage for roughly 7 seconds. If you manage to take out an enemy during that time frame, the timer will reset and the damage bonus will increase even further to a maximum of 50%. Keep the corpses piling up, and you'll keep the bonus. You can increase your damage with a rifle even further by investing in the Penetrator perk, which allows each shot to ignore armor, up to a maximum of 35%. Besides that, at rank 4, armor piercing rounds can penetrate 3 additional targets, or a block of up to 1000 hit points when using hunting, marksman, or sniper rifles. Now, some people may be ready to say that AP ammo is a waste of resources because it doesn't do what the description says, but if you use the infiltrator perk, it really doesn't matter. Even if you get zero damage bonus from using AP ammo, you can still hit up to three enemies with every single bullet you fire. This can be amazing when tackling a horde if you can filter them down a path towards you. Mixing this with the Deadeye perk results in an absolutely devastating combo. As a side note, the ignoring of 35% of armor is not limited to only rifles. That's applied to all firearms, bows, and spears, making this a perk that is absolutely fantastic for any build. Each level of Demolitions Expert will increase the amount of damage you deal with explosives by up to 50%. Much like the Deadeye perk, you'll get a bonus to reload and aiming speed, and you'll also learn a lot about crafting explosives because each rank unlocks between 2 to 3 crafting recipes to make things go boom. If you level Perception all the way to rank 10, you'll have a 50% chance to dismember a zombie. If you get Demolitions Expert to rank 5, you'll have an even higher chance to dismemberment. <laughs> it's so beautiful, it make a grown man cry. If you plan on sprinkling landmines around your base, putting a few points into the infiltrator might not be a bad idea. Each rank will cause you to take less damage if you happen to set off a landmine, and at rank 3, you'll be able to pick up any that you find. Additionally, if you step on a mine, you'll get a few extra seconds before it gets triggered, and if you happen to stumble across Urban Combat Volume 5, this part of the perk becomes worthless. That book will let you tap dance on top of mines without having to worry about setting one off. It's kinda nice. Moving on! Okay, so I'll be up front and say that spears are my least favorite melee weapon. If you like them, that's awesome. To me, they're lackluster mainly because the perks only increase how much damage you deal and how far you can throw. You're limited to either basic melee attacks or throwing your weapon. If you manage to knock a zombie over, you can recover the spear, but if the zombie doesn't stumble, you've just thrown away your melee weapon for nothing. But if you're not lactose intolerant, there may be a bit of cheese you're interested in that'll turn your enemies into pincushions before they've had a chance to react. Before going any further, let me be clear that I did not discover this. A Redditor named Inspector Robert posted a clip detailing this, which is where I learned about it, and so credit goes to him. Load your tool belt up with as many spears as you can, but leave at least one space open. After that, take the first spear, right click so you're about to throw it. Once the bar is full, don't release the mouse button. Instead, cycle to the next spear, then let go of the button. Press it again and charge this spear up as well. Repeat this for each of them, then equip whichever slot is not a spear. Find your target, and then cycle through the spears. Since each is reserving a charge, they'll fly out as soon as they come up. Now, obviously this isn't working as intended and will most likely get patched out. However, I won't tell the fun pimps if you won't. So that's about all I've got to say about spears. Moving on. This one really doesn't need an explanation. Level up Animal Tracker to see how many chickens are within 100 meters of you. Sure, at higher ranks it'll also tell you if bears or wolves are close, but we all know who the real killer is. Lockpicking in this game can be a great source of dopamine. 
First time, fuck yeah. Or it can make you want to punch a kitten in the face. Invest in the lock picking perk, save a kitten's life. As for treasure hunter, it's kind of limited in usefulness, but if you're constantly running buried supply quests or treasure maps, it's worth it. However, if you only run fetch and clear quests, I'd say to pass this one up. Lucky Looter will increase your looting speed drastically and add 25% to loot bonus. This means more supplies, more ammo, higher chance for weapons, and so on. Salvage Operations increases how much you get when tearing things apart with a wrench, ratchet, or impact driver by up to 100% and allows you to do it twice as fast. The items gained from salvaging are used for everything from making traps to crafting weapons, repairing turrets, boosting generators, and so on. It also increases the damage you deal when using the tools for combat, but I don't know of anyone who uses a tool as a weapon outside of emergency situations. The perception tree is all about causing as much damage as possible while not costing nearly as much ammo as other builds. Personally, if I start a playthrough with a focus on the perception tree, I'll level the attribute to level 7 as soon as possible. This allows me to reach Deadeye rank 4, the Penetrator rank 3, and max out Lucky Looter and Salvage Operations. At that point, I'll split my future level ups between expanding into other skill trees and then getting Perception to rank 10 so I can top off Deadeye and the Penetrator. Well guys, that's about all I've got, so thank you all very much for watching. If you found this helpful, please let me know, and if you're interested in seeing more of my content, consider subscribing. Thanks everyone, have a great week.